KLI of news and information time coming up on 717. Now, well, it happens every year around the holidays. A distant family member or maybe even someone close to you gives you something you either have no clue what to do with or it's a sweater that's too tight or you hate it. You just need to get rid of it. However, you have to beware of the giver's feelings if you do regift it or return it. We are joined now by etiquette expert and author Colleen Rickenbacker on the do's and don'ts of returning all those unwanted gifts. Good morning, Colleen. Good morning, Amy. How are you doing? Good. Thanks so much for joining us. So, how many unwanted gifts did you get? Uh, Absolutely none this year, which is kind of nice and shocking. (laughs) There's always that one when I open it, I am so braced and ready to go. But with a smiling face, I always say... Thank you so much. This is so wonderful, you know, and I'm ready to go with it. I know, but that's what you have to do. You have to have a smile and, and, and pretend like you like it, but then what do you do after that when you want to really get rid of it? If you're ready to re-gift it, or, and there's a couple of rules that you have to be very, very, very mindful of. If you know you're going to re-gift it, first of all, you have to be aware of the person that's giving it to you. If it's an aunt or a very close relative, you can't because they're going to ask you about it and they're going to expect you to see it in your home or, or on you, or like a sweater uh-huh. or something. And they're going to say, where's that beautiful sweater I got you last year? Or where's that, you know, candle? Well, candles are easy enough. But where's that item that I had for your home? They want that to appear. So that one time of the year, you may have to wear that or you might have to put it out in your home. But if it is something that's too tight or not your right color and you do want to exchange it, then kind of just tell the person, Oh, I love the gift you got me, but it wasn't the right color, it wasn't the right fit, but this is what I got in exchange if they ask you, and that way you kind of set up right away, and they can say, oh, okay, well, that, you know, that's, that's just as pretty, or that's just as nice, and, it, you know, instead of kind of beating around the bush and, you know, all of a sudden a little white lie and everything else that goes with it. But I have, a, I have my, my three little things. Be very careful if it's an office gift, an office exchange, because they're going to remember the next year. Family's number one, the office, and then your close friends. If it's a close circle of friends, you're not going to re-gift back to those same close circle of friends. So um, just watch those. I know if I give a gift, I always want that person to be happy with that gift. Um, so I wouldn't be offended if they wanted to return it for something that they really, really wanted. Don't you think most people feel that way? Exactly. And the people that are exchanging it or re-gifting it, you're more uptight than the actual person that gave it to you. So just, you know, don't worry so much about it. But if you are going to re-gift, make sure it is a new gift, especially like a gift card. You'd be amazed how many gift cards are given that say it's a $20 gift card from Starbucks, maybe you don't drink coffee and someone wasn't aware of that, they will give you a gift card that was $20 originally is now fourteen ninety five because they went and bought a cup of coffee. Oh, my goodness, really? <laughs> oh, wow. Or even a lot less than that because they, oh, they used it, they forgot about it. Oh, here's a gift card. I'll just give them a gift card. And there's like $1.98 left on it. And it's ridiculous. And people have even told me stories where they got gift cards and nothing has ever been activated on it. Or, or, or the gift card still says, you know, dear Sally, happy whatever. Uh, yes. Watch books because sometimes they'll grab a book and it's been, dear Amy, the best for the new year or happy holidays or Merry Christmas or whatever it may say in there. And they just randomly picked it up and gave it to somebody and it has been specifically addressed to you. Or there's a card inside of it. Same way for boxes, even though you think that the box looks brand new, inside was tucked a nice little note to Sam or to somebody else, and there's you know that it was regifted. So just be careful the packaging, that everything is brand new, the new packaging, new notes, new everything that's in there. Should you also online is be kind. Maybe if you're saving th- something to regift, should you write down who gave it to you and the situation so that you remember? Oh, so when you go into the right. closet to take yes. it out, you don't forget and then give it back to the same person. Yes. That's almost the number one rule. Keep right now that everything's fresh in your mind. Keep a little area where you are going to re-gift. Make it your re-gifting area where everything is tagged, where you got it from your office, your family, your friends, and who gave it to you, who was in that little circle of friends that gave it to you, and make sure it's all clean, good condition, and ready to go. So it's, it's almost like a wedding. You've got to mark everything down, which is another thing, too. When someone does give you a gift, you should send a nice little thank you note. Is there a way to tell Aunt Sa- Sally that you just hate that sweater and you do really want to return it for something else? Uh, yes and no. It depends on how much you're going to hurt Aunt Sally. If Aunt Sally is, uh, some Aunt Sally's you can do that and some Aunt Sally's you can't. You almost have to know how Aunt Sally is going to take that. 
some of them you can say, oh, Aunt Tally, I love this so much, but it's just, you know, not, it just doesn't fit well. The color is not good for me. Would you mind if I take it back and just get something that's maybe a different shade or a different color? And she's going to say, yes, honey, of course, I would love that. Another Aunt Sally might not take that so well. You just have to know the person. Hmm. But it'd be nice because year after year, poor Aunt Sally's spending maybe a lot of money. Right, right. It's not exactly, and it's, it's wasted. And so, you know, try it and kind of go from there. But it's, it's nice to try it. But if you try it once and you know it's not going to go anywhere, then stop. You just kind of, you know, beating yourself <laughs> trying to do it with her. We're talking to etiquette expert. Way way. We're talking to etiquette expert and author Colleen Rickenbacker about uh, all those unwanted gifts you may have gotten over the holidays and how you can re-gift them and maybe return them tactfully. Um, I, I tend to give gift cards to people because then I want them to go out and buy what they, wanna, what they want. Um, but... Some people think that's very impersonal. How do you feel about that? I think it's a great way to go, especially teenagers and people that feel they have everything they possibly want. To me, that's a great way to go. Write a nice little card with it, a nice little note, and they love it. And I think for, you know, younger, for my nieces and nephews, that's the only way I'll go. Because I used to buy them things. I used to spend hours buying them things. And... They don't wear them. They don't like them. A pair of jeans, you know, I mean, what I like in jeans, they're not going to like in jeans. Or a sweater. Gift cards are great. And, you know, but make sure, you know, you know, the Visa, the MasterCard, the American Express, and then they're safe. But it's nice if you can ask them what kind of store do they like. And then, you know, iTunes are safe. But make sure, you know, you know what stores they like and then give them specifically for that or go very generic. And no, they're not. They're a nice gift card. And do it that way. And be careful with one and a, you know, very specific cards or very specific gifts because then they may not like that. And so be, you know, more open. We're probably too late for this year, but maybe we can prepare for next year. Holiday tipping. Um, who should you tip and who shouldn't you tip? There, uh, that one I love. And so it's think of people like your teachers for your children. If you have a teacher, my best advice on that is go more, go together and get your teacher something because then that way you can get your teacher something. So they're not all, a teacher, if there's 20 people in the class or 30 people in that class, they're not getting 20 or 30 little, little, little gifts. It's nice if a couple of parents can go together, maybe give them a nice gift certificate for a restaurant. If they're a younger teacher or, you know, a teacher that maybe has children, maybe then give them a nice night out with a babysitter. You can all go together because, you know, you know your teachers by now. Give them a babysitter and a nice dinner out for them, maybe them and their partner or their husband, wife. They would love something like that. If you know they have a special restaurant, then make sure it's to that particular restaurant or a book that they want. That way it's not such a burden on you that you're spending so much money. A lot of you can go together and get them a really nice gift. If they do it like a nanny or if you have a housekeeper, then it's worth whatever you're paying them that week or that month, then you should pay them that, and that's what their, their gift is. Actually, if you have a post, you know, if you want to give your postal carrier or your trash collector anywhere from $10, $20, if they're a government employee, they cannot have more than worth $20 in a gift because there's a 2050 rule on government employees. $20 at one time or $50 throughout the whole year. And so, and then your hairdresser, if you give them, you know, 15%, usually when you're tipping them, you might want to double that tip and maybe even give them a tray of cookies. So it doesn't always have to be monetary. You can be something that you make for them or something that you want to, you know, just give them, you know, maybe a baked good or something like that. There's a lot of tipping that can happen over the holidays. All right. I bet all this is included in your book, Beyond Your Best Business Behavior. Where can it we get, definitely is. Where can we get a hold of your book? You can either go to my website, which is ColleenRickenbacher.com, and, you know, right there is all my information. You can email me or give me a call. All right. Happy answer. Thanks, Colleen, for the tips. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, and Happy New Year. Same to you. Colleen Rickenbacker is an etiquette expert and author of the book Beyond Your Best Business Behavior.